Hey everyone, it's Pastor Bill Wiggs coming to you from Sunfield and Greenwood United Methodist Churches in Southern Illinois. It's Monday, March 23rd, 2020, and we are still in our time of isolation. Uh, I was reading today from Psalm 146, which is part of today's Revised Common Lectionary. And I want to share that with you today. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Here's what it says. Praise the Lord. Let all that I am praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God with my dying breath. Don't put your confidence in powerful people. There is no help for you there. When they breathe their last, they return to the earth, and all their plans die with them. But joyful are those who have the God of Jacob as their helper, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He made heaven and earth, the sea, and everything in them. He keeps every promise forever. He gives justice to the oppressed and food to the hungry. The Lord frees the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are weighed down. The Lord loves the godly. The Lord protects the foreigners among us. He cares for the orphans and widows, but he frustrates the plans of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever. He will be your God, O Zion, throughout the generations. Praise the Lord. I love this psalm. It begins with praise and it ends with praise, and there's praise all through it for the wonderful works of the Lord. And perhaps we need a little bit of that praising the Lord today in order to lift our spirits so we can experience the joy of the Lord, which is our strength, no matter what's going on around us, no matter what the news is about this virus or anything else right now, for that matter, that we can praise the Lord. I love that the psalmist says, let all that I am praise the Lord. All that I am, everything we are body, soul, spirit, mind, everything we are. Praise the Lord. What a joyous thing to hear. We really do need to commit our whole selves to God. Everything, everything we are, everything we have, everything we hope to be to God in praise and thanksgiving for all that he's doing. He says, I will praise the Lord as long as I live and I'll even sing his praises with my dying breath. There are times when we get ourselves so frustrated, so troubled, so depressed, that we find it difficult to really enter into praise. And during this time of social distancing, perhaps we should spend some of that time not just with Netflix and chill or something of that nature, but rather praising God. Maybe in your household, sing some hymns together as a way to lift your spirits, to experience the joy of the Lord. We need that in our lives right now. Uh, right now, it's, it's one of those things we have to trust our leaders who are trying to get us through this. We have to trust the medical professionals to try to get us through this. But at the same time, we must understand that if our confidence is only in our, the powerful people in our world, then we are going to miss the true blessing of putting our trust in the Lord. Because truly... God is the one who will work this thing out for us. He's going to use a lot of people in the midst of it because God created us. He created us with fine minds that are able to do more than we give them credit for. We fill them with so much stuff that just doesn't matter. But he also gives us the creative ability to be involved in the healing of the nations. And so God is doing that right now. And I believe that if we'll continue to trust him that he will get us through all of this. I love that in verse 6, it talks about the fact that he made heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. Uh, God made everything that we see, everything that we don't see. It has been corrupted by the fall when our first parents, Adam and Eve, sinned, and when we continue to sin. But still, God made it all. He knows what will go together to solve this problem. And it's good for us to even pray, God, just make it all go away. Just make this virus absolutely be deleted from the face of this earth. That's a prayer that we need to pray. He's going to provide for us. He's going to provide for us the food and supplies that we need. He's going to provide for us the medical care that we need. 
He's with us. He is a healer. In verse 8, it says, The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. That's talking about healing there. Spiritually blind, physically blind. But I think it applies to all illnesses. God is our healer. And that's good news. He's going to lift us up when we allow our spirits to be weighed down with trouble. The Lord is going to show us his love. He protects the foreigners amongst us. I've had a real concern over the last few weeks for all the foreign students who are here uh, from other lands. They can't go home, but the schools have shut down. And this says that God's going to protect the foreigners among us. And so he's providing places for them. A lot of them are going to be in some Christian homes, and that's going to be good, especially if they're not Christians now. They'll get to hear the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ from Christian people who show them love and grace. The Lord is there for the orphans, for the widows. He's going to be there for our loved ones who are in nursing homes. My, my dad's in one right now, and I worry about him. I, I'm not ashamed to say that. I'm concerned that he's not getting the socialization he needs. But I know that God is not going to leave our nursing home residents alone. Even when we can't hold worship services for them, God is still there for them. We need to trust him in that. And I so appreciate all those who are working in these care facilities to make sure that our loved ones who can no longer care for themselves are being taken care of. And I've seen some great video this, uh, this morning of nursing home staff working with their residents by putting them in doorways to play bingo or even a great video they had someone who had given them fun noodles to bat a balloon around. Hey, anything they can do is a wonderful way of showing love and care to our loved ones when we can't go see them. The Lord will reign forever, the psalmist says. He will be your God, O Zion, through all generations. Our God is supreme. He is over all things. And because of that, we can rest assured that He is working on our behalf. But we have to trust Him. As a nation and as the world, we need to be on our knees in prayer, either physically if you are able or in spirit, on our knees in prayer, asking God to intervene in this situation, asking God to calm our hearts, to bring us peace and hope. After all, we know that those are gifts of the Spirit of God. So, my brothers and sisters, praise the Lord today. Here it is Monday, and a lot of you normally are going to work. Well, a lot of you have the day off. So those with the day off or those who are working at home, praise the Lord that you have a home to be in. For those of you who are considered essential workers and you had to go to work this morning, uh, our prayers are with you. We're thankful for the work that you're doing, and we pray God's protection on you today. For the truck drivers who are crisscrossing this country, bringing us goods, praise the Lord. I just want you to praise the Lord as you travel. I know some Christian truckers who spend their time on the road listening to gospel music, listening to the Bible. Whatever it is you're doing, friends, keep doing it and be in prayer. And we're praying for you, our police and all of our first responders. Praise the Lord today. Praise the Lord that you are able to serve the community. That's part of the work of God. So do it with joy in your heart and experience his presence. Let's go before the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we praise you today. We praise you that you have given us a medium to reach the world through the internet, and we're thankful for that. We praise you, God, that you are providing for our needs, even at times when it's a little more difficult to get what we need. You're providing, and we're thankful. We thank you, Lord, that you are in control, even when it seems that chaos reigns. And if we will only trust in you, then our hearts can be filled with hope and joy and peace. Lord God, today, we pray for all of our first responders, for our police, our ambulance drivers, our EMTs, our uh, firemen, and all the others that are working to care for us in this time of need. We thank you, Lord, for the hospitals, for the doctors, the nurses, all of the support staff. And we ask, Lord, that you would continue to protect them. We pray for our leaders, Lord. Give them a Holy Spirit-inspired imagination on what is best for us. Help us to trust that you are guiding their hand today. 
We pray, Lord, that you would be with all those whose jobs are going away now. Some people have lost their jobs already. Some are concerned about that. But, Lord, you've promised to provide for us. So we're going to praise you even now. Lord, help us to have a heart full of praise today and every day, no matter what. Be with our expectant mothers and all those who are waiting the coming of babies. Lord God, we just pray that you would care for them. Help them to know your grace. Continue to renew our joy. And in all things, may we praise you with our hearts, our minds, our voices, and everything else that we are because of you. For it's in Jesus Christ, our Savior's matchless name that we pray. Amen. Well, blessings to you, brothers and sisters in Christ and our friends. We pray that today you do experience his joy. Praise him today, and we'll be back with you tomorrow with another devotion. The Lord bless you and keep you today. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Amen.